Hello everybody, welcome to the video 4 of Kotlin series. Today we are going to learn about the Kotlin OOPS concepts which are object oriented programming concepts. We will see how to create a class, how to create objects and how to create constructors, primary constructors or secondary constructors in a Kotlin class and the biggest feature of Kotlin which is data class. We will learn about that and we'll also see the visibility modifiers in Kotlin. So let's jump onto the code straight away with IntelliJ IDE. So here we have a file named of sample and in this we have a function main. So we'll create a few classes here. So basically classes in Kotlin are declared using the keyword class. So let's declare a class named as sample and I can give it a body like this. All right, and I can name my class whatever I want to. Let's say I want to name my class as a person. So this is a class uh, named as person and I can go ahead and create an object of this class like this by calling the constructor. So every class comes with a primary constructor which is there by default. And in case I need to specify some uh, primary constructor of my own I can do that as well by using the constructor keyword and it's my choice to fill in these arguments or not but generally if we are specifically defining it it's good to have some arguments so I'll give it an argument of string and the, so now when I create an object of a person I can say I can define the name of the person all right so now a class in Kotlin can have a primary constructor and one or more secondary constructors so we'll go to secondary constructors constructors in a little bit amount of time but before that uh, let's see about primary constructor so we can we don't really have to write this uh, keyword here we can omit this as well and everything will be fine but in case uh, people who are coming from Android background who are using Dagger in their app and they use the inject annotation for that you definitely have to use the constructor keyword we cannot miss that if you're using any annotation but if you're not using any annotation in that case you don't have to write the constructor keyword so we'll remove this constructor keyword from here and let's define some property for this person. We'll call, we'll create a property, very uh, a mutable property as age, and it will be of a type integer. And by default, we will give it a value as zero. And the whenever we create the object, we can change that value. Okay, so let's go ahead and create an init block for this class and write a print ln statement here the name of person is dollar sign name and age is dollar symbol age all right so let's go ahead and run this function main and it will create a person class so let's run this code and we see here that the classes and objects in Kotlin, which is a print statement here, and the name of person is current and the age is zero, which is the by default value that we have given here. All right, so let's try to create a secondary constructor here and modify the value of age. So let's create a constructor and also, if we have to create a secondary constructor, we also have to make sure that the secondary constructor, if a class has a primary constructor, then each secondary constructor must delegate to the primary constructor, which means that if I'm going to define a secondary constructor here, which will take an age, I also have to declare the name of the name parameter because it is already defined in the 
prime deconstructor. So I will call the prime deconstructor and pass in the name parameter here like this. So this is the way I am declaring a second deconstructor. But I don't really need this body, so I can, uh, or, I, or I can just uh, write a print ln statement in this body and say that name uh, second tree constructor name is equals this is a second constructor and I can write a bunch of print on statements here and I can write the name is equals to dollar symbol name and the age is equals to dollar symbol age all right so cool we're good to go let's create another object for the person where we specify the first name as joe and we give it an age of 25. okay so you can see there's a bit of an error that is displayed here type mismatch required integer so here it is expecting it to be age first and then a name so we'll write age first and then we'll write the name we'll remove this last parameter okay we're good to go let's run this program and see what happens so first of all we're calling the primary constructor once which is here this line and when we call the secondary constructor by default the primary constructor is also called that is the reason you are able to see the name of the person is Joe and the age is zero which we have initialized here all right so now the secondary constructor is called and we can see the values that the name is Joe and the age is 25 so this is the way you can create a secondary constructor again the thing to keep in mind is that in the secondary constructor you should always delegate the primary constructor so since we already have a parameter here which is name that is why we are also calling the name uh, using the this keyword all right so by default the constructors are public for the, uh, the primary constructor is public, but in case if I want my constructor to be private, I have to specifically type in the name of the constructor, uh, the constructor keyword and make it as private. So now I will not be able to call my primary constructors. So you can see here, I can see some error here. It says cannot access in it it is private in person so it means that this constructor is now private and I cannot call it from outside the class all right so by default the constructor primary constructor will be public I can write this thing over here as well by default the primary constructor will be public all right, so we do not need uh, to write this constructor here specifically, so we can omit this for now. All right, and okay, so I think this is it for the secondary constructors. Let's jump on to the next part, which is data classes. So data classes is a very beneficial feature from uh, Kotlin language as compared to Java. In Java, we had the Ojo classes where you click hold some data which can be used throughout the app you can pass the data from one view to another using a Pojo class and in Kotlin you don't have a Pojo class basically you have a data class using a data keyword so let's go ahead and create a data class so data class and I'll name it as user and I'll give it a few parameters like name string and I can give another parameter the age of the user which is integer 
and that's it guys that's it what we have to do to create a data class so what it will what the Kotlin compiler will do is that it will automatically create the methods like to string equals hash code it will create the getters and the setters but if you are coming from a Java background you will already know that we had to create all of the getters and the setters method on a pojo class so those are the advantages of a data class because the Kotlin compiler will create those for you itself. Let's talk about the visibility modifiers in Kotlin. First of all, we have private, which means that you can access this from only within the same class. If the access modifier is protected, then means you can access within the same class plus sub classes as well. And then we have internal modifier, which means that you can access this property within the same class plus it's a typo within the same class as a m e plus the entire module itself so by default all the classes and all the variables are public in nature in the Kotlin class so this will be everywhere wherever you can access the class there you can access this public properties access the class all right so these are the different visibility modifiers for a class all right so this is it for this video guys if you have any questions please leave your comments down below and i'll be very happy to respond to them until then be must and keep rocking